The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. So you've got yourself some builder grade oak cabinets that are perfectly functional. There's nothing wrong with them, but you just want them to look a little nicer. Uh, one of the things people do to update them is give them a coat of paint, right? But there's a right and a wrong way to do it. Lots of products on the market. I'm gonna show you what's most familiar to me as a furniture maker. Um, just as a disclaimer, you might do some research and find some possibly better solutions out there. But this is what I'm gonna do. Now, story here, my mom actually just moved into a condo. The kitchen is nice, the finishing touches are nice, but she's not happy with the builder grade cabinets and new cabinets are not in the budget right now. Uh, we also don't wanna necessarily buy new doors or build new doors for it. So uh, painting is what we're gonna do. Uh, but there's a little bit of prep work that goes into something like this because oak is an open poured wood. So you have to decide if you wanna just hit them with paint or if there's gonna be a pour filling process. But either way, it's a lot of work, right? <laughs> a lot of work. And there are only two people on this planet who I would actually do this job for. One is my mom and the other is Nicole, maybe. Now I want you to look closely at this oak door. We'll talk a little bit more about these pores and the uh, deep open grain. If you look closely with a clear finish, sometimes you can see it if you catch the light just right, uh, but it can be hard to see. Now when you paint this surface, because of all the little deep grain pockets, pore pockets, those indentations become a lot more obvious and this is why people pore fill. You don't necessarily have to do it. Some people don't mind it. You know, my mom does. She doesn't want to see it. So let me show you an example of one that's been filled and one that hasn't. Now, if we look closely at this door, you can see a lot of the obvious grain. What happens is the paint goes onto the surface. It doesn't necessarily penetrate real deep into those little grain lines. Uh, and while you could keep coating it with paint and try to build up and build, 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 it usually winds up telegraphing through the finish and you see all of these grain lines. But if you do a pore fill, it should look a little more like this. Here, it's much more consistent. We don't necessarily have all those little ravines, and certainly from a distance, it just looks like a nice, solid, clean panel. So it gives you a much cleaner, more contemporary look. But again, some people may like this look better. Totally up to you, it's a visual thing. Do what you think is best. But we're gonna do a pore fill, and let me show you how it's done. Now, there are a lot of pore filling products on the market. What I like to use is Timbermate Wood Filler. It is a water-based, sort of powdery kind of filler. Easy to spread, easy to sand. I've used other products and I keep coming back to this. It's just so easy to use and usually you could do it in one coat. Uh, this is actually something you would use to do repairs on wood. It's a very uh, sort of thick consistency, but you dilute it with water until you end up with something like this. It's got a little bit more of a pancake batter thing going on. Uh, and what I have here is just a bunch that I've been using up uh, and I put a little bit of dye in there. And while it's a very ugly grayish green color, this cabinet door is going to be a dark brown. So I'm going with something that's uh, in a darker color family. And maybe that'll make it a little easier to coat my paint colors. So I just put some on the surface and I'm gonna get a putty knife and I'm gonna spread it across the grain. Grain is running this way, and if you go with the grain, a lot of times you just kind of pull the stuff right back out after you put it in, but going across or going at a slight diagonal like this will drive this putty down into the grain. Now I should also mention, you've got face frames to do, right? So the cabinets that are on the walls, it's up to you. That's one shortcut you could take. You could say, well, it's just a face frame. Most of it's gonna be covered by doors and drawers, so I don't have to do a pore fill there. It's up to you, but the process would be the same. Now you do wanna go right up to the edge where the panel meets the rail and style, but I caution you to be careful there. If you get too much of the schmutz underneath there, you are going to have just kind of a weird look where there's some putty, some not putty, some putty, and uh, it doesn't look great. So do your best to just kind of go right up to that edge and drag it in. And I highly recommend if you have a small, very thin putty knife, bring it across here and just clean that out when you're done. You can see a little bit goes a long way. Now you might be tempted to just do the panel, but I highly recommend you do the frame as well because that can look bad too. I'll show you a cool little trick here. As we're going across, getting this frame done, it's okay to be messy. You know, see that little spillover? That's fine, we want that. Same thing on the outside profile. Now because we have a you know fairly complicated inner profile and a outside profile here, the putty knife 
can kind of be more trouble than it's worth in here. You could also gouge the wood. So what I like to do is just take that little bit of extra material and use your finger and spread it across. Try not to get too much into the corners and into the uh, inside corners like that. That could be kind of a pain in the butt to sand later. And it's really what you have to keep in mind. Everything you're doing right now is gonna be a problem in a few minutes when this dries and you have to sand it back. So, you know, maybe do one, learn some lessons, and then apply what you've learned to the rest of them. You might figure out some cool tricks to save yourself some work in the sanding process. Now it does set up and dry pretty quickly. As that happens, if you want, you can come back over and scrape one more time. And a lot of times it's a good way to save yourself some sanding later. We're getting some of that excess off. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, leave it alone. <laughs> it's very easy to sand this stuff later. All right, let's do our other style over here. If you do some research, you'll find there are some other products out there, high build, sprayable sort of things you could apply to, uh, to the wood, you know, via spray, and then sand that stuff back. This is a very manual way to do this. It's a very DIY way to do it. And that's okay. The thing to keep in mind here is I'm really not shooting for absolute perfection. I wanna do something that's just better. I want it to look better than it did. I wanna postpone the inevitable replacement of the cabinets, we'll, you know, which will happen at some point in the future. But if I could buy her five years, 10 years with something like this, that's what we're going for. And you don't need absolute perfection for that, but if you've got the skills and the materials to make it perfect, then go for it. Now you can see how much time I'm spending on this already. And this is one door. Okay, multiply this over the course of 20 doors and drawers, 30, depending on the size of your cabinets. And this is why I say it is a lot of work. This is not a weekend project, I could tell you that much. At least that's not a single weekend project. Now, remember with the face frames, I told you there was sort of a cheat opportunity where you don't necessarily have to pour fill the face frame itself. Uh, here's another possible cheat opportunity. You don't necessarily have to pour fill the inside face of the door. Totally up to you if you wanna do it. Obviously, it always looks better if you do, but if you're short on time and you just really want it to look good from the outside and that's all that matters to you, then only do the pour fill on the outside. Now within about an hour, your panel should be ready to sand. So it's a good idea to just do the pour fill on as many as you can and kind of batch them through this process and then start sanding them all at the same time. Now to do the sanding, uh, there's a couple things I'm gonna use. I've got a random orbit sander. Uh, you could certainly use a quarter sheet sander, just any kind of small sander to allow you to get most of the flat surfaces very gently. You don't wanna to be too aggressive. I've got a sanding block that's gonna be helpful. A card scraper, certainly for corners and things like that. Maybe even a chisel, depending on your situation. And then of course, sandpaper. Now I'm gonna use 180 or 220, kind of whatever I have. I like to do the whole little trifold method where you fold it one time and then fold it another time on the inside. And this way you have a couple of nice, crisp, square, and rigid edges that you could get right into the corners. Um, I also have one of these sanding profile. It's a, just kind of a flexible rubber material. I think I got these from Rockler. Uh, these are fantastic for getting into those rounded inside areas and also on the flats out here. Uh, and a, a very important piece of equipment is a respirator or a dust mask. You don't wanna mess around with this stuff. You don't wanna breathe it. The mask is not optional, it's absolutely required. So highly recommend you wear one of those. All right, so let's get to some sanding. So that's a, uh, that's a pretty ugly looking door. <laughs> I mean, if you do this right, it really shouldn't look great. The idea is all of that 
colored material goes down into the pores every time you see those dark spots, that's the spot that was filled. But you do kind of want to get back to the bare surface because we want to at least make sure that we've scuffed the original finish that was on here, whether it was a lacquer or a poly, something like that. We want to scuff it a little bit so that you have that kind of mechanical tooth for your paint to bind to. But essentially, this is what you're going for. Now, if you opt to not do a pore fill on the back side, you at least want to make sure you scuff it up with that 180 grit and just get all, I mean, if there's little spots of gloss, it's not that big of a deal, but you want to just make sure it's kind of nice and even satin or matte look to it. Again, giving us a nice surface for the paint to bind to. Now for the paint, I'm going to use General Finishes Milk Paint. And oddly enough, it's not actually milk paint. That's usually a powdered material that you mix with water. This is an acrylic paint that is just kind of satiny, matte looking, and it gives the appearance of milk paint, but gives you even more durability. Um, they also have a great selection of colors, which is one of the main reasons we're using it. Uh, because cabinets do get abused, I'm going to be using an additional top coat with a satin uh, sheen to it, and that's going to give us more protection. Now, when it comes to this painting and top coat business, there are a lot of products out there that won't require a top coat at all. Do a little bit of research, talk to someone at a paint store, great products out there, but I don't paint very often, so sometimes when it comes time to add color to something, I go with what I know and with what I'm comfortable with, and this system will work and give my mom the protection she needs and the look she wants. So that's what we're going for. I'm going to apply it with a HVLP gun. If you don't have one of those, you could certainly use a regular bristle brush or a foam brush or even a roller on some of those bigger panels. You can get decent results with that too. So let's load up the sprayer. I like to dilute the paint about 25% with water and I use a two millimeter tip. I start by spraying the back. While General Finish's milk paint isn't actually milk paint, you can see how matte the dry film is, very much like traditional milk paint. After a few hours of dry time, I flip the piece over and spray the front with two coats. Once that's dry, I apply a clear coat of high performance. I dilute the finish by about 10%. Now where you go from here is pretty product specific, so follow the manufacturer's instructions for things like the number of coats, sanding between coats, and a lot of it just depends on how much protection you want and how much of a film you want in the end. So what I'm going to do here, I really only need maybe one more coat. Uh, you know, HVLP does put down a decent amount of material, so two coats is going to do just fine. And I've got some 320 grit sandpaper here. And really, all I'm looking to do is find any little dust nibs, just give it a nice light sanding to clean it up and smooth it out. Now this is really more tactile than visual. I'm not too worried about how it looks. Uh, I just want to make sure I don't have any grit or anything in the surface. When you get to the edges and the profiles, just be really, really careful. It's all too easy to dig through your finish and go right through the paint. So only sand where you need to and then have a light touch while you do it. And finally clean off all the dust with a vacuum or compressed air. So here is our finished door. You know, not too bad. It's absolutely not perfect, but I think it's good enough. I think my mom will be happy with it. It's a nice satin finish with that clear coat on top that allows it to be clean. You gotta remember, if you do something like General Finishes Milk Paint that ends up as a matte finish, matte finishes don't really hold up that well to cleaning. They show scuff marks. It's very obvious when stuff happens to it. So uh, something with a little bit of a sheen allows it to be cleaned very easily. Uh, and overall, you can see the pore fill makes a big difference in how much of that grain you see in the final result. I mean, you could still tell it's made of wood. You see some of that grain, but it's definitely not as obvious. All right, so I had a whole kitchen's worth of these doors and drawers to do in two different colors. And while this really isn't a kitchen makeover video, I do want to show you what it all looks like installed at my mom's house. So let's go check it out. So here's what it looked like before. And here's the after. The first thing I did was add a support strip to the top and that allows me to attach some crown molding. 
Such a simple thing, but it really makes a big difference in the final look of the kitchen. From there, I painted the face frames and the island by hand. I really didn't want to spray inside the house, so with a good quality brush, you can end up with absolutely minimal brush marks. Here's Jay and I slogging through the pore filling process. And by the way, this was Jay's last project with me, and he's heading back to Missouri. It was a great year, Jay. I miss having you around. So I painted the doors one color at a time, starting with the upper linen color, and then the dark chocolate for the lowers. Now I know some of you will take issue with painting wood, and I get it, but not all wood is created equal. In fact, you should see how much perfectly good wood they used just to build this place, only to cover it in drywall. But seriously, this paint job updates the kitchen and extends the useful life of the cabinets by years. In the end, it's what my mom wanted and she's happy, and that's all that matters. You can do whatever you like with your cabinets when the time comes. Thanks for watching.